Okay. Uh, let's um, let's implement this uh, class cache register first. So, in implementing a, a class, uh, the first step, the very first step, is to create a constructor. So, constructor is a method that initializes instance variable of, of an object. So it's automatically called when the object is created. And so the Python use a special name underscore double underscore init, right? Initialization, and then double underscore for the constructor because the, it, its purpose is to initialize an instance of the class. So when you look at this, uh, when you look at this cache register, right? So we need to have a constructor. All it's this is uh, the first step is to create a constructor, and this constructor is going to initialize. So this initialize this uh, instance variable. In our case, the constructor so when the object is created from this class register, the constructor is is going to be invoked. And this constructor is going to initialize item count and the total price. Okay, so that's the, cons the main job of the constructor. And then if you look at the constructor, they use this underscore init and underscore, and then they use a self, right? The self, by the way, uh, okay, the self. The first parameter, the variable of every constructor must be self, as you can see, self, right? When the constructor is invoked, the constructor it, it invoked to construct a new object, the self parameter, the self parameter, the self and the self, this parameter variable is set to the object that is being initialized, the object that is being created, okay? So that's the uh, self, by the way. So let's just uh, using the Python shell to you know, implement a class cache register. So let's uh, do that. So file, new file. So please follow this uh, example. And then first you have a class. And the class name is always start with a capital uh, letter. So the cache, C, the capital C, S, register and then colon so that's the cache register is the name of the class and then i'm going to create a, a constructor so def definition double underscore init and then self right the self is something that you must just need to be included no matter what and then you have a two um you have a two instance variable right so um, this init this uh, constructor must have a two imp parameters because you have a two instance variable so i'll just say i as item count and then i'm going to use a t so let's say it item count and then uh, the total price Right, so you have a two uh, input parameter uh, for this constructor, and then colon. So constructor is basically is another function, and then you need to use a self dot. Now you need to write the uh, instance variable name. One is item count, right, and then if that is going to be equal to item C. So this one, right? So basically the main, later on the main is going to provide some value to this uh, constructor. And using this, this value is gonna be uh, used to initialize your uh, instance variable. So in this case, instance variable is basically uh, 
underscore item uh, count. So that's the uh, instance variable, right? And then this item C is used to initialize this uh, instance variable, item count. The next one is self dot underscore total uh, price is equal to total P, right? Another, uh, once again, instance variable is what? In this case, it's total price, underscore total price, right? So that's the, so the first step, no matter what, the, whenever you create a class, your first step is, is always what? Creator, create, and constructor, right? This is always the first step. And then once you create your uh, constructor, you can uh, create an object, right? I know that I have a couple of more. So as you can see, I have a couple of more uh, method that I have to create, add items, get total, and get count. But uh, first, my uh, the first task is always no matter uh, no matter which class you create, the first step is always create a constructor, right? So then, once you have a create a constructor, you can create an object. Now you're ready to create an object. So I'm going to use a main. In the main, I'm going to create. So once you create a main, I need to invoke the main, right? So in the main, I'm going to uh, create an object from the class. So you know that the class is not an object, right? Class is a type. So I'm going to create a, a first uh, object, right? I'm going to create a first object. The object name is, let's say, uh, register1. So this is reference variable. This reference variable is, is now is, is going to point to an object of class cache register. So now I'm going to, so first I have to write a class name, cache register. And as you can see, this cash register, once uh, this is like a, what, this is the name of the class, right? But for the, um, if you look at this constructor, this constructor is supposed to have a two input value. One is item count and total price. So let's say if your first item count is a zero, and then your total price is a zero. Right, so when th so this means this is the syntax for creating the creating an object, and in this case the cache register object, and then uh, the zero is provided to the item C, and then the zero is uh, provided to uh, this total I P uh, parameter, the second parameter, and that's why. Um, to instance variable item count is is going to be what is initialized to zero, and the underscore total price this instance variable is also is uh, initialized uh, to zero, right? This way now I have just created the uh, the first first object. Okay, now. There's another uh, syntax that I like to uh, I like to show you another way to write the uh, constructor. So what if? Okay, so first let's just compile this, right? So run this module, and then I'll say test two. Good. So it works. So I don't have any syntax. Uh, Era. Now, what if I, so, okay, at this point, right, at this point, as you can see, I have, what, I have created the 
object, right? Yes. Then register one is a reference variable. Okay, register one is a reference variable. So what happened is So reference one is uh, uh, basically the uh, reference variable. So what happened is now you have register one. It's a reference variable. This reference variable is pointing to an object. So this is object. Object of type cache register, right? So you know that this is the uh, attribute, right? This is attribute. And this, okay, so this side is attribute, and this side is a method. At this point, uh, I have not really created any method, right? Just, just constructor. And then uh, for the attributes, right now, uh, right now, the item count, this item count, the initial value right now is a zero. Right? And then total price, TP, the total price is now the zero. So right now, uh, this is what I did. This reference variable register one is pointing to an object. So this is a reference variable. It's not an uh, object. This, this reference variable is pointing to an object, right? Of, of type, the cash register. So this is what I did, right? Now, uh, let's just try. Uh, let's just try uh, to create another object. So this time, I'm going to create another reference variable, register two, and then cache register. And this time, let's say what happens if I do not provide any value, right? So basically, when the when the second, uh, so what I'm so this is what the second uh, object, and this one is first object, right? So what happened is when cash register, when this object is is uh, is about to is about to be created, what happened is it's going to call this constructor. The problem is there's no value, right? So let's say, but it's, you're supposed to provide a value for uh, item C and total P. But let's just run this, what happens. When you try to create an object without any value, and but you're supposed to provide these two values, right? And see what happens. They give me an error. And they said, missing two required positional argument, item C and total uh, total P. So basically it's complaining that you're supposed to provide a, a value, right? But uh, so basically to resolve this issue, you can just provide initial value, some initial value, right? Something like this, you know, or like a 90, you know, some value. Then, then it's fine. Or another way to solve this issue is you say item C is equal to zero, and then total P is equal to zero. So this is a useful syntax uh, that you should know. What happens is this means when when there's no values is provided, right, at the time of object uh, creation. What happens is this item C by default is going to be a zero, and then total P by default is going to be zero. Okay, so this is a useful syntax uh, you should know. So let's, so this means basically by default, uh, if the values are not, okay, by default if the values are not provided, then item C is going to be zero or by default and total P is going to be zero. So that's what they mean. So let's just run this. If you, 
uh, have any uh, if we have any syntax error. So let's just run this. Good. Now I don't have any problem. So I'm going to end my video lecture here. In uh, in the next uh, lecture, I'm going to add basically um, I'm going to add this add items and get total and get count. Okay, to this. Uh, this class definition. So let me just end my lecture here.